for chapter 11, we are going to be talking about immunity. Quite a long chapter, by the way, this one. Um, so let's dive right into it. There is no clear way to define what immunity is. You know, if you go online or if you check different books, um, you can actually see that different uh, people define immunity, uh, you know, in various ways. So, but long story short, immunity, do not have to memorize this one. Immunity is just basically your body's ability to fight off pathogens. Now, I don't mean to scare you, especially if you're quite an anxious person or uh, you are quite germ-phobic, okay, because some of my students are. Uh, but you have to realize that we are surrounded by pathogens every single time. There are pathogens on your skin, there's pathogen on the table. Uh, heck, there are some pathogens in your body just waiting to cause an infection, but they can't. Um, so these pathogens are constantly harassing and haranguing you. They're just waiting to... All they're trying to do is go into your body and steal your resources. But by stealing your resources, they're also going to cause damage in your body. But here's the interesting thing. Even though we are constantly surrounded by pathogens, in most cases, we don't fall sick all the time. And even if we do fall sick, we usually recover without any permanent side effects. There are exceptions, obviously, okay? But under normal circumstances, uh, the reason why we don't fall sick all the time, or even if we fall sick, we recover, it is usually due to our defense system. And what exactly are these defense systems? So we have two types of defense system, which are the external defense system and the internal defense system. For A-levels, the main one that you have to know is obviously your skin, because your skin provides a waterproof barrier and it just prevents pathogens from entering directly into your body. Simple as that. Okay, and the skin does some extra things uh, like, you know, they produce uh, a certain type of acid to make the pH of the skin about 5.5. So it prevents the bacteria from easily growing. Sweat also contains certain types of chemicals that can prevent bacteria from uh, proliferating. So these are just some examples. But for A-levels, uh, just in the exam, if they ask you to list out an example of external defense system, just say skin. That's good. Now, another example of the external defense system is in your stomach. Now, I know what you might be thinking. The stomach is inside your body, should, so shouldn't it be considered internal? The reason why the stomach is considered external is because the inner part of our stomach is exposed directly to the outside world. For example, uh, notice the purple colored thing that I'm highlighting. Any food that you eat is exposed to the outside world. It goes into your esophagus and directly goes into your stomach. So your stomach is exposed to the outer elements, so to speak. So in that case, what actually happens is your stomach produces uh, something known as stomach acids or hydrochloric acids. And this acid, what it does is it usually denatures the bacterial pathogens and kills the bacteria. Simple as that. So just put stomach acid if they ask you to list out um, external defense system. Another example of external defense system is in our airways and our lungs. Yes. The lungs are also inside your body, but for the same reason as the stomach, the lungs are also deemed to be exposed to the outside world because when you breathe air, the air from the outer part of your uh, body will enter your lungs directly. So your lungs are exposed to a lot of harmful pathogens in the air. They are exposed to dust. They are also exposed to like, you know, certain types of chemicals, but we are focusing on pathogens here. So in your airways, such as your trachea, um, there are two very important things, uh, such as mucus produced by the goblet cells that trap the pathogens. And you also have ciliated cells, which contain cilia, and they will push the mucus up words. Both your lungs are protected from the pathogens in this case. Now, I know that mucus and ciliated cells are supposed to be in chapter 9. I have not done the video on that, and I've also mentioned it before in the comment section somewhere, that I'm a bit lazy to do chapter 9, if I'm being honest with you. Um, I will eventually get around to doing it, but for the time being, eh, okay, just...
Anyway, so moving on, <laughs> uh, we have uh, the internal defense system. Now, what, con what is considered internal then? Internal is what happens when the pathogens, for example, let's say the pathogens manage to survive the stomach acid and it goes into your intestine. From the intestine, it enters your blood. All the pathogens were in the lungs, and then from the lungs, they enter the alveoli, and from the alveoli, they enter the blood. So this is now considered internal. Because when the pathogens are inside your blood vessel, so anytime the pathogen is in your blood vessel, that is internal. And from the blood vessels, they can spread to other parts of the body and diffuse into the other parts of the body. That is called internal. So when, they are, when, when the pathogens are in your blood or in your body cells, how then do we actually deal with these infections? That is when we need to use the immune system. Okay, And the immune system is basically your white blood cells. So your white blood cells are part of your immune system. I want you to understand something important. The immune system is an extremely complicated system. Very, very, very complicated. Cambridge A-levels barely scratches the surface of what the immune system does. All right, uh, and I speak from experience because when I studied immune system in, you know, school, it was like, oh, white blood cells. But when I studied it in university, it was like, damn, it's a lot more than what I expected. Your immune system goes beyond just white blood cells. Okay, There are also a lot of different types of chemicals that are involved in this. In A-levels, we are going to be looking at two types of white blood cells, which are the phagocytes and lymphocytes. But the true immune system does not just involve these two white blood cells. There are many different players in this extremely complicated modality.